Hello and welcome to the lace video where I'm going to show you how to make the little bookmark called a lace rosarium. A rosarium is another word for a rose garden and it's really fitting for this design because it is going to introduce you to rose ground and three different varieties. The rose ground is usually shown as four pinholes with a four lines making it look like a square. So this is your rose ground here. We're also going to look at how you work a gimp, which is this thick line here. I'm going to start my bookmark with a point and so I'm going to put a pin straight in that top pinhole. And I'm going to start with an open start. Now I'm going to show you an open start with two colours, um, but I will replace the um, gold with a white. So I've put two, a pair hung around the pin like that. And then I'm going to take my second pair. Now if I was to hang them side by side in their pairs like this, what would happen is that when you take your pin out, you would end up with two separate loops on that pin. And, and that might be a design feature for some bookmarks, but uh, generally that's um, you don't want two loops because it's going to look a little bit messy. So what you do is that you split the pairs up. So you, we've hung the first pair on and we hang the second pair so they're there on the outside of that first pair. And then what we have is one pair made up with uh, one bobbin from one pair and one bobbin from another, and then the same on the other side. Now to know if you've done this correctly, if you pull this thread, the bobbin on the opposite side moves, and if you pull that thread, then the same happens. So I'm just going to replace that with a white pair because I want two whites to start with, and I'm going to do this two coloured, um, just so that you can see what happens with the uh, rose ground. So I'm going to put white down one side and the gold down the other side. Um, that doesn't mean that yours has to be two coloured, um, but I did that. I'm doing that because uh, then you'll be able to see what happens with the pairs. So I'm just going to check my bobbins are correct, and you can see that when I pull them, they move. So I'm then going to lock the two threads together because if I don't lock them together, I will still get my two loops. So I'm going to put two twists on and remember your twist goes from right to left. And whenever I do a bookmark like this, I will start the first row as a cloth stitch and twist because it's a stronger stitch. These ones, it doesn't matter because you've got a stitch above and a stitch below. But when I just have one row of stitching, I generally use a cross stitch and twist. So I'm going to cross stitch, twist both pairs. So that's my first two pairs, one to go that way and one to go that way. I'm then going to pop a support pin in and I'm going to come down on one side um, in a different colour. Uh, so this side is going to be gold. So let me just shorten that bobbin. So I hang it on the support pin and I'm going to work a cloth stitch and twist, pin up and close with a cross stitch and twist. And that gives me a really strong edge. So I'm then going to carefully take out my support pin, pop it back in the hole and then take another pair and do exactly the same. So I'm just cross stitching and twisting, pinning up and closing with a cross stitch and twist. So I'm going to add all of them down on that side in this gold. I've added all the pairs down one side, so I'm now going to to the other side and I'm going to add my white down on this side. So again support pin, new pair, cross stitch and twist, pin up and close with a cross stitch and twist. Then I'm going to take my support pin out and carefully lose my loop and bring in the next pair. So I'm going to put them all on 
I've now reached down the edge of both sides and I've run out of pins on that row. So just as the, um, in the rules of torsion say, you need to go back up to your highest point. So this is my highest point and I'm then going to work down here and down there. Now these single dots here and here and here are your ground stitches and it's entirely up to you as to what stitch you do in your ground and um, it's worth playing around to see the different shape that your ground make and I want these wipes to end up on, on the edge so I'm just going to do a half stitch because um, when you do a half stitch just a plain half stitch your pairs travel so you'll see this when we get to do the gold side in that the pairs will travel down that white pair will end up at the bottom so i'm going to do a half stitch pin up and close that with a half stitch and then i'm going to i'm going this pair will go down this side and this pair will go down this side so i'm going to do my gold first and you'll see that by doing a half stitch your white pair the white pair will travel down through all of the gold so I'm just doing half stitch, pin up, half stitch. So that's what happens with um, a half stitch. Everything travels with a half stitch. If you want your threads to stay where they are, you will need to do a cross stitch. And I will show you the difference. I'm going to do half stitch in this little diamond. Uh, triangle and then cross stitch in the next one down and then you'll be able to see what exactly happens and how they look but at the moment I'm just bringing this white down now I've reached the end end pin now um, I'm going to do this edge in a cross stitch and twist because then the um the edge is really strong but i wanted to do it with my white so i need to switch my white with my gold so we already know that if we do a half stitch the the white will travel so on this particular one i'm just going to do a half stitch so that i've then manipulated my threads so that white will now work all the way down this straight edge I could have done a, a cross stitch and twist so let me just show you what that would look like so if I do a cross stitch and twist pin up and close with a cross stitch and twist the white will now travel down this row and the gold will travel down the edge which could be actually very interesting and would border the uh, the diamond so I think actually I'll, I will leave that one as it is and we'll see what happens because we've got that white line there so it's entirely up to you as to watch what stitch you use but you need to be aware of what happens with the threads when you're doing certain stitches because it means that you can then manipulate the threads to go exactly where you want them to go so I'm going to go down the other side and then we'll look at the gimp i've now added all of my pairs and i've done the first row here so the next stage that i need to do is my gimp thread now a gimp thread is really easy to do and it just means that it outlines an area so here it is outlining outlining this square the brilliant thing about a gimp is that you could put it anywhere because it's not actually reliant on pins. So if you had a prick in that didn't have a gimp, there's no reason why you couldn't add one. And that can be seen here on, this is my August bookmark, and as you can see there's no gimp. So what I would do, if I wanted to highlight and outline these areas here, before I put it um, onto card and blue plastic, I would just take a pen and just draw in some lines, uh, probably with a ruler, but um, you can see there. So that now would outline that rose ground. 
so you would just draw it in and if you're at all worried draw it with a pencil and then go over it with a pen with this gimp i want a pair one bobbin to go that way and one bobbin to go that way so what i'm going to do is i'm going to use a berry pin which is uh, taller and has the blob on the top which means that i'll be able to remove it easily and i'm going to hang my gimp thread on that so this is my pair now i've chosen to make my gimp a thicker thread as well as a different color um, personally I prefer a thicker thread because uh, it's highlighting um, but there's no reason why you couldn't use the same thread uh, thickness thread but in a different colour but I, I personally I think it, it looks nicer and more distinguishable if you've got a thicker thread but it's a, a personal choice now how does your gimp work well this gimp here is on the right and it needs to go to the left so it is going to travel all the way down this line. So if I bring in my first pair, as you can see, the gimp is on the right of this pair and it needs to go through this pair to end up on the left here. So this bobbin here is going right to left. And if I bring in my little cribs sheet, you can see that L and R stands for right and left and left and right. And O and U is over and under, under and over. So I've already identified that this GIMP thread needs to go from the right to the left to work its way down. So the first bobbin is going to go under and the second bobbin is going to go over. So I'm just going to leave my little crib sheet there. So we're going to go under the first bobbin and over the second so we've gone under and over and then the really crucial point is that we need to put a twist on that pair which then locks that thread in so i'm finished with that pair and i'm now going to bring in my next one because remember my gimp is going all the way down so it's still on the right and it needs to be on the left of the pair so we're going right to left under and over twist now don't panic if that twist disappears and as long as you've got it there it will, it will be fine but it, it does have a tendency of moving so we're bringing my next thread because we haven't reached the bottom yet and it's still going from the right to the left so we can go under and over twist so we can do that making sure that every pair has a twist before the gimp and after the gimp so bring in this pair now this pair is going down that line so just remember that you can pick your bobbins up and lay them in their diagonal lines so it's still the line comes after that bobbin that pin so we still need to go right to left so under and over twist let's bring in our next one so that's the next one and we can still see our gimp line so we're going under and over and twist Let's bring in the next one. Ah, oh, now look. This pair is going to go down this line, but the gimp thread is going back, back on itself. So we don't need to put this pair through our gimp. So our gimp has gone as far as it needs to go. So that's that one. And now we need to move everything over because we now need to take this one down to the other side so let's bring our first pair in now make sure it has a twist on it which it does now this time our bobbin is on the left and we need it to go through this pair down to here so it needs to go from the left to the right so if we look at our little crib sheet again left to right we go over the first bobbin and under the second so let's go over and under and then twist the pair and as you can see the um, twist moves so we're going to bring in the next pair so we're going um, left to right over and under and then twist so we've got the next one so we're going over the first bobbin under the second bobbin and twist now this particular way we can actually do it all in one go because if we go over that one 
and under that one and then put this pair uh, this bobbin straight over there we've put the twist on whilst we were doing the over and under in so we're nearly at the end so this pair you can still see the gimp this side so it's still going to go uh, through the gimp so we're going over and under and I put it here and I've automatically put my twist on this is the next one so we can still see the gimp this side so we still you need that pair in over and under and there's the twist on on automatically now we're going to check with this pair now can you see this pair is going to run down that line and the gimp is the other side of it so we don't need to take this pair in and that is our gimp done so it one of the crucial things you need to remember is to put that twist on and I always do it as soon as my uh, gimp thread has gone through. Now once we've put in our first rose ground up at the middle here, we can then take that support pin out. But if you take it out now, there's nothing to support that gimp thread. So I'm hoping that explains how to do a gimp thread and we will cover it again after we've done our first lot of rose grounds um, in the next video i will show you how to do the uh, rose ground in the traditional method thanks for watching